Welcome once again to Plus Politics. The Edo State House of Assembly is made up of 24 member seats, but of the 24 seats, 14 were declared vacant, while only 10 hold plenary. The crisis started when 12 members of the Assembly were inaugurated, while 12 shunned the inauguration exercise, alleging that it was not properly convened. Joining us to discuss this is a political analyst, Nosa Agatise, and a member of the Federal House of Representatives, uh, Ben Ibakba. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. All right, I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Ibakba. You're a member of the House of Reps in uh, for Edo State. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, quickly share with us, um, a lot of people have described the current situation in, in Edo State as completely undemocratic. I want you to share your thoughts on the um, crisis in Edo State, in the House of Assembly, and how we found a state that currently is having just 10 people um, holding plenary. Yes, uh, thank you very much. You know, the proclamation by the governor, which is a prerequisite for membership of the State House of Assembly, and the president, in the case of the National Assembly, is a constitutional matter and it's under Section 105, Subsection 3. And um, the constitution is very clear as to the functions and what the governor is supposed to do, which the governor um, did. Uh, there are some lacuna, there are some areas that, um, that are vague, which I know any governor that uh, have some sinister motive will want to explore that need some level of amendment, um, and I'm working on that. So uh, for the, for the, for the el members elect that were, according to them, they were not informed of when the proclamation was made. Uh, proclamation are supposed to be published. I, and from what we had, it was published. And um, some persons happened not to know. Uh, for me, there's nothing Ill illegal about it. It is those ones that are available that is counted. You cannot count people that have not been duly inaugurated into the House. First, they, they were members elect, and until you are sworn in, until you take the oath of allegiance uh, to the Constitution, oath of secrecy, and uh, submit your um, uh, code of conduct, uh, what is it called, CCB, uh, the, the code of conduct of the reform for asset declaration. Uh, you are not uh, a bona fide member. And so long as those constitutional requirements have not been fulfilled, uh, they are not known to the House and to the law. Okay. They are supposed to, uh, until they come, take oath of office, that is when they are members. So for now, there are 10 members in the House, and whatever they do uh, to third majority, surely, so as long as they have to third majority, anything that goes is quite legal. Okay, well, you're a member of the House of Reps, and um, so I'm guessing that you understand uh, to a very high extent the importance of representation for people. Um, in Edo yes. State, with 10 members in the, national, in the House of Assembly, um, doesn't that leave a large number of people of the electorate in Edo State without proper representation? And how do you think this affects governance in the state? You know, again, that, that is, I quite agree with you that um, people are being denied of representation, but it is not the, the fault of the executive. It is the fault of the members that were elected. You see, after election, it is governance. And it is sad that my dear colleagues um, contested election, and after winning election, they were still playing politics. After election, the next thing to go into is governance. They, they, ab they abdicated their responsibility as people that are supposed to be in government and they went into politicking. And that is the cause of where they are today and their constituencies. So I think this will tell them, this will teach them a very, a very, very sad lesson that after election, they should be talking about governance as far as I'm concerned, whether um, executive or the, the legislature is uh, supposed to be complementary, not, not competitive. And uh, they turn out to be people that are in the competition as if the election is still waiting, um, and this is the result. So really, there's nothing wrong. The members that are in the House are just 10, and to third of that 10 will always carry the day. Uh, there's nothing that says that members must be 24 or 29 before they can take action. So, so it simply looks like a political gamble gone wrong. 
Um, there's those who have yes. also mentioned, you know, the influence of Godfatherism, you know, that maybe would have uh, created this, uh, the space for this gamble that has eventually gone wrong for, you know, some of them. Um, I, I, let's now talk about, because it's, it's been two years, so now, now let's talk about the possibilities of fixing this um, uh, challenge. Is there still hope that fences, you know, could be, you know, mended? And these 14 well, can be brought back to the house? Well, um, constitutionally, I don't think there's any hope. But if they decide to go on the side of political resolution and settlement, there's something could be done. But if you're looking at the laws, so long as their seats have been declared vacant, there's no, there's, there's no, nobody's occupying that seat. Nobody is there anymore. But if they decide to go the political solution, maybe. But again, some other person can pick it up and expose the illegality that, that will follow. But as it is, they are no longer members of the House. Their seats have been declared vacant. They have stayed away for too long, and they have not taken oath of office. They were never recognized. So I, I'm even surprised that the Speaker had to go to the extent of declaring their seats. So there were no seats. Nobody was, those seats were, were vacant ab initio. There was nobody occupying those seats. So the Speaker, I, I think it's just a waste of time for the speaker to even go ahead and say they are declaring the seats vacant because there was nobody occupying those seats, those seats because nobody took out of office for those constituencies. Nobody uh, submitted their code of conduct uh, after declaration forms. Nobody took out of allegiance. So there's, there's nothing. There was, there was nobody there. It's like vacating where, there's, where nobody was occupying. So the, uh, talking about going legal and constitutional, uh, there's no remedy. But politically, yes, they could do something. And that again, depends on nobody going and trying to expose the illegality. All right. And, and do, do you think that Governor, uh, Godwin Obaseki will still be open, you know, to, you know, maybe having, uh, you know, a conversation, you know, concerning a political resolution? Well, uh, politicians are the most flexible people in this world. He's a leader. He is a leader, and I know if he has his way, he will want to do something because of the constituents, because of the people back home that actually uh, notice that, uh, that they, are, they are lacking representation and the people voted for him massively. He's not doing it. If he, whatever decision he decides to take, trying to see what he can do, maybe meander the, the, the way it is, the dirty water, and find a solution. Uh, because as a governor, he's the father of the state. And he won his election um, um, convincingly. We want to consider the people and uh, see what he can do. If I were in his shoes, I would do that line and uh, be a father that, uh, um, that we should accommodate everybody. Oh, well, um, not a very interesting picture. Um, can you also quickly share, you know, just before you go in 30 seconds, um, about, um, well, the former governor, Adam Sushomele, who is, well, currently no longer in the picture. Um, are there roles that he may also be expected to play here to find a way to heal these wounds in their, those state politics? Well, um, I didn't get that question. It was a little howling. I'm asking about the former governor, Adam Soshomole. Do, do you think that there might be a little role that he can play here to heal the wounds in Edo state politics? Yes, yes. definitely. Uh, Comrade Soshomole has a, a very big role to play. Um, elections have been won and lost. And um, it is God that gives power. And I know uh, the governor will want to also do the part of peace, not because, uh, like I keep saying, not because of the representatives. It is because of the people that they are representing and, and because of the love the people have shown to him. I think he should think uh, about it. But Governor Shemole has a lot to do. Shemole, um, Obaseki is his... Um, this is boy. Uh, that's what I should say. They are all men, but uh, one is older than one, and one will happen to be the boss of the other one. Sorry to use the word boy, but it's, um, whether you like it or not, to somebody they, they work together. He was um, his appointee, despite that he worked without salary. I, I think he will still listen to him, and other Edo politicians should come together and heal that, because that is one area that needs to be healed, they need to be cleaned, so that the entire state can move in one swoop, irrespective of their political affiliation. Benny Bakpa, thank you so much for your time uh, thank this you. evening. Thank you. And of course, uh, with uh, other Edo State conversations, we would like to also bring you in. Have a great e evening. Thank you. Thank you, my brother.
All right, still is boss politics. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, I'll be giving my take. And here is my take. The essence of the House of Assembly, both at the state and national level, uh, for representation of the interests of the electorate, they speak for them, they convey their concerns to the executive, and of course create laws and policies to better the lives of the electorate. The Nigerian society and political space has, over time, made the act of representation almost irrelevant. You can see it with the way state governors handle local government positions and allocations. You can also see it in the process through which state House of Assembly members are you know, elected. It almost feels like government doesn't care about the need for proper representation um, Well, in, when politics is being played. In the absence of these persons, how does a government properly understand and cater for the basic needs of the electorate in every community? How does the government make laws that improve on, on the living standards of every person in every community when they are not properly represented in the House of Assembly? Let's also not forget the likely role that Godfatherism and personal political interest has also played out in Edo State in the situation we're discussing this evening. Some people have abandoned the call to serve and instead chased their own personal political interest. We must do better, we must demand better, and we must vote better. And that's all we have for you on Plus Politics this evening. Thanks for joining us. I am Osao Gye Ogbonwa. Good night.